everyone welcome back to my channel inch by inch art today i'm going to be showing you how i did a kit bash between my dollar store scorpion and my centaur from a mini kit now the size of the creature i was going to be making was for a DD &D game with a one inch scale so i knew that it was a large creature and i decided to use a piece of cardboard to be my base once i measured it out to two inches by two inches i could proceed with modifying my mini to fit the first thing that I did was remove all the excess bits that I didn't want from the centaur model. I knew that I wasn't going to use the horse body, so I just cut off the front of the man's torso, and then I removed his arms because I knew that I was going to place them in different positions with different weapons. Once I had his torso removed, I started to place him onto the scorpion and see exactly how I wanted him to fit on. I knew that the original way the tail was, which is kind of out to the side, uh, this tail had already actually broken off, but it wasn't in an upright position and I knew that I wanted it in that sort of striking pose. So I removed the tail, adjusted it to be the shortness that I thought I would need, and then checked to see that the legs were also splayed out much more than I really wanted. So I decided that I would make all the legs by hand with wire and green stuff and reposition the tail. I needed the model to be quite a bit shorter than it originally was, and you can see that I sort of played around with what positioning would work best. I wanted it to be straight on, but I thought that having it at an angle on the square was actually okay as well. I just used some super glue to glue the man torso onto the front of the scorpion. The super glue didn't work great. For some reason, it didn't want to bond to the types of plastic. They were quite different plastics. So I ended up using E6000 jewelry glue instead, which I used for the tail and reinforced the torso a bit after the super glue, and it worked way better. I decided that I'm going to make the legs out of wire, and I used reference images of scorpions to see how their legs would normally be positioned, and then made the wire mimic how their legs are jointed and bent. I wanted it to be a bit more positioned and have a more dynamic look than just flat, so I knew that if I used wire and had it up off the ground, I could play with it a lot more and adjust it to be in a more dynamic pose. I used a drill end bit. This is usually in sculpting toolkits. You can find these uh, or you can just buy one or, or use a small simple drill bit to drill into the scorpion body where the legs were to make it easier to put the wire that I had bent into the body. Once I've got all six of my legs added, I just check to see how it will fit on my base again. Trying to figure out positioning. It's still a little bit bigger than I want, but I hadn't figured out how to deal with this yet, so I just moved on to the next part. Now I'm modifying the arms so that I can get the placement the way I want. I was okay with the bent arm. It just wasn't in the right position before because of the weapons that the mini is originally holding, but the other arm I knew I wanted to have straight. I was trying to figure out what kind of weapon to use and I still hadn't quite decided yet, but I had something in mind that would be some sort of pole arm, staff, something like that. Here I am just mixing up some green stuff, which is the main thing that I use to modify most of my plastic minis. It's quite durable. I've noticed that even if I drop a mini, it's almost always fine if I use green stuff as opposed to other types of clays. It fills in gaps and it's a bit tacky, so it sort of works as both a mild adhesive and gap filler. I'm just trimming off some excess that was left on the arm that I don't need that helps me with positioning. I put a little bit of green stuff in essentially his armpit and just pressed it on and manipulated it with my sculpting tools to make sure that there were no areas where the green stuff was sort of sticking out or anything like that. I added green stuff all over this model because I wanted it to look more like a cohesive piece and I also wanted the man torso to not really look so much like human and look more like some sort of armored creature. I decided that since scorpions have segments that his body should also have segments so I went up the abdomen where the muscles are and while matching the location of the muscles I added green stuff in a segment manner so it was organic in its appearance. I'm just using my usual silicon sculpting tools. These work great with green stuff. They don't really stick to it, though I do have water in front of me at all times just to be sure if I need to use my finger that it won't stick. Sometimes I'll also add it to the sculpting tool, partially out of habit. I don't think you actually need to do this, but it 
does smooth it out quite well and ensures that nothing will stick. If I do need green stuff to stick to something, I usually use the metal ball end of these tools. It sticks quite well because it's very tacky. I just show examples of doing one of the legs for each of these rather than going over every single one because you don't need to see this six times. It was pretty repetitive work, but it came out pretty well in the end, I think. I just did layers of green stuff, essentially starting at the very base because it was the furthest in and hardest to reach and manipulated worms of green stuff around the wires. I tried to do it in separate segments of the legs, so each straight part I did separately. Partially I did this to give it a different look because I wanted it to look like insect legs, so it has very clear joints between them. And partially I did this because it is easier to work with green stuff when it's not all still tacky and curing. It's very very easy to accidentally bump with your fingers and ruin any sort of details that you've just put in. So I like to let it sit for a few hours or overnight before I work on the next part. Just building up some of the tail, adding some spikes along the back, I thought that it was a little too bland on its back and that the tail should look pretty aggressive. So I just put little worms up the top and then used my angled silicone sculpting tool to press spikes into it. I also decided to add to the tip of the tail because the original stinger on the end of the tail was very rounded and not spiky or more pointed. So I decided to use green stuff to make a better pointed tip that looked more aggressive. Here I'm just checking out how his little abdomen segments look. I think they came out pretty good. Working on the next segment of the leg. So you can see I did the base connection bit, which I, I drilled the hole, I used the E6000 glue, I pressed the wire in, and then I immediately did green stuff around the very base to give it a really secure connection to the scorpion body. I let that sit overnight, and then I moved on to this part where I'm doing the next strip of leg up. I think I waited maybe five or six hours before I went on to the next segment of the leg. And I tried to do sort of like kneecaps that are a bit spiky and protrude over the next segment of leg again to give it that insect look. using E6000 glue again. That arm that I decided to make straight and use the green stuff on is cured. So I'm just trying to position exactly how I want the arm to be placed. E6000 glue is great. It cures pretty quickly. And I found that it's a really good hold. And I reinforce all these parts with the green stuff anyway. So even when the glue is not perfect, it's okay because the green stuff helps hold it and reinforce it as well. Here I'm using little tiny spots of green stuff to make spikes on the claws because I thought that that would look cool and more aggressive. It's a custom fantasy creature for a fantasy game, so I wanted to jazz it up a bit. Plus lots of scorpions have bumps and spikes and protrusions all over, so. So I basically just tried to roll a little tiny point or cone in my fingers, and then I placed it onto the claw and used my cone-shaped sculpting tool, pressed down around it so that it would have a spike in the center and then be pressed really firmly onto the claw. So I didn't actually use any glue because again, green stuff's quite tacky when you don't use water. So it stuck pretty well on its own right to the mini. Here I'm just adding the green stuff and filling in that armpit after the E6000 glue had cured. Filling in the back of the model, there was a gap between the abdomen of the man and the scorpion, so I had to use the green stuff to fill that in and make it more of a smooth transition. I also cover the face of the original scorpion with another segment bit that matches the abdomen of the man's torso to make it more fluid where it meets. 
Here I'm using a fresh X-Acto blade to cut up the face of the man. I decided that it was way too human in the face and that I wanted it to be more creature-like. So to do that, I decided to remove the beard and I also removed his hair because it, it was just too blocky and, and big to work with. I wanted it to have a much smaller head. Here you can see now that I've got his hair off, he's got a much smaller, rounder head. And I'm taking a break from that and moving on to the next segment of the legs. It was really the same process for each part until I got to the foot, although I did do, like I said, a little bit around sort of a kneecap. But I just made a little worm of green stuff, pressed it on around the wire, and made sure that it connected at the back and just smoothed it as much as I could. Here I'm trying to emphasize the segments and make those little kneecap parts that I was talking about using different angled tools to try and press in a point on the top. Once I get down to the feet, it's a little bit trickier. So I took a worm of green stuff that I rolled out and just press it into a V and then wrap one side of it around the single wire that's sticking out so that the second part is just sticking out next to it. So there, there's no reinforcement under the second toe. It's part of why I only did two because I thought more than two would start to get too complicated, but it worked pretty well and I haven't had any of them break off yet. So all is well at this point. I'm just building up some pecs on this guy. I decided that he was both armored and segmented so I, I tried to blend them in well and get them to make a bit of sense with the human-ish torso. I gave him collarbones as well that I just pressed in with my sculpting tool there. And I add armor all over the sky and again went for a segmented kind of style so I did a strip on the top of the arms and a strip on the bottom of the arms leaving the seam open and emphasized with my sculpting tool so that it looks like two separate pieces. And then I use the angled sculpting tool to press in lines so that again, it, it's a segmented look going up and down the arms. I also added some shoulder plating that I'm adding on here. I just pulled a little sheet of green stuff flat and cut it about the length I thought I would need to wrap around the whole shoulder and just added it to the top. I did two layers of this, so there's a bottom layer and then a bigger top layer just to make it again look very layered and segmented but also like armor. I try not to make pauldrons too large because I think they get kind of excessive in fantasy art, so I tried to make them not gigantic. I get that he's a fantasy creature, but there's still a line of realism in my mind. Here I've rolled out a piece of green stuff to be a flat strip and I'm wrapping it all around the head. I decided that I didn't want any of the facial features of the human to show at all and I would just make it easy on myself and cover the whole thing, press in certain details that I wanted and then put more green stuff on top for other details. To ensure that it stuck really well, I pressed it in really hard so it was quite secure on there without any sort of glue or anything like that. And then I took a cone and added it to the top of the helmet head because I thought it would be neat if it had sort of a matching backward spike on the top of its head that resembled the spike on the back of the tail. I built up a little bit around the face. I did actually end up changing this a couple of times because I really wanted him to have a cool, creepy maw or some sort of 
I don't know, mandible mouth thing going on, but it just wasn't working out the way I wanted. I had it in my mind that it should be angular and match that segmented abdomen area, but it just didn't look right. And every time I tried to make a mouth opening, it either wasn't deep enough or big enough or I don't know, it, it just wasn't working out right for me. So I ended up removing it and just flattening it and decided that I would give it more of a mask look and gave it a creepy six eyed plate area on the front instead. And then I did this wrap around worm thing that I'm doing here. So I rolled out a worm, it was pointy on each end and I did, I think I did five of them and I wrapped them around from the back to the front and had the spikes sticking out at the front. So the, the pointy ends are on either side. So it's sort of like a mix between like legs and fingers wrapping around the back of the head to the front, which I thought looked really cool and insect alien looking. Then I added a single piece of green stuff on the top, which I pressed in my angled sculpting tool to give that segment look again. So the, the very top is flat with segment bits. And then for the front, I just pressed a piece in the very center and used my angled sculpting tool to make creases where I put indented dots for where the eyes were going to be. And I did six of those. So it has a very alien insect look to it in the end that I was good enough. I, I would have liked a cool creepy mouth, but I think that it's still actually kind of creepy to not have a mouth. Here I am looking at some options that I have for weapons. I had cut a whole bunch of minis up and these are my leftovers. So I had some crummy axes off an orc and a shield off of a skeleton soldier. And then I had these ax heads off some dwarves. I decided that it would be pretty neat if I did a double ax ended pole type weapon. I don't know if there's a real weapon like this. I imagine there probably is, but I'm, I don't know what the name is. So I used this piece of wood to see about how long I would need the staff of it to be and used this wire, I can't remember what gauge it is, but I, I used this fairly sturdy wire that was small enough to fit into the end of the ax heads so that I could just press it right into the ax heads and use that as a way to hold it all together. So I heated the wire with a lighter and I pressed it into all the plastic. So I did that on the ax head itself. I did it through the hand and then I did it through the other ax head. It was a really good way to adhere everything together and get the pull through quickly. I did actually mess around a little bit trying to use different needles and all kinds of stuff to make a hole puncture through the hand, but I was starting to push too hard on other parts of the piece and it was making me worried I was going to break something. So I just tried the lighter method and it went great. Uh, at this point, I've decided that it's definitely too long and not how I want it. So I cut the tail off and I cut a bigger section off and decide that I'm going to have the tail up and curled in more, which I think makes it look way better than it did before. The tail was sort of, it was still curled up, but it seemed a little bit too relaxed and I wanted it more poised for striking. So I took my E6000 glue after I cut off the excess and glued it in a more curled up position. And I just have to fill that little gap at the bottom of the tail that's there now once the E6000 glue dries. So I just wrap some green stuff around, press it in, and then again push in the details that I've now lost a little bit of from cutting it. But it's easy enough to fix that with my sculpting tools. Just pressing it in really good to make sure it's got a good connection. And making the green stuff match what is in the tail itself. I've decided that I need to beef up its back a little bit as well because the back looked a little too weak to me. I thought it should be a pretty thick guy if he's got this large weapon that he's wielding in one hand and this massive scorpion body. I didn't want it to seem like a small waisted guy on a huge scorpion body. It just wouldn't have seemed right to me. So I did segments up the back quite clearly as well to sort of, again, match the segments of the rest of the body. And here I'm preparing the base. 
So I decided to just stick with the cardboard. I usually use wood, but I figured since I cut this out and used it as a template, I would give it a go to see how it was as an actual base long term. I try to find ways to make minis cheaply or easily, and I thought this was a good experiment. So I just took some toilet paper, wet it, and used some glue, basically did paper mache with it, and wrap it around the cardboard and let it dry. It makes for a really good ground texture that's simple and quick to do, and it also sticks a bit to the miniature itself if you put it on when it's still wet. The glue I used is just PVA glue. I adjusted my miniature a bit to see how it would fit and I made sure that anywhere the legs stuck up a little bit because of the way I had angled it that the base had material underneath so it looked natural and correct that it was a raised leg or at an angle. It was super easy to just wet a paintbrush, put some PVA glue on it and press the toilet paper in there. For this next bit, I'm just making sure that the feet are very secured down. So I take some baking soda and some super glue. Baking soda is not only an accelerant, but it's also a filler for super glue. It worked way better than I had expected. And this worked great for a super fast way to secure the mini down exactly where I wanted it. And just flip it upside down and tap off the excess baking soda and that's that, it's adhered and in place. So I'm just gonna let him dry and next week I'll be showing you how I painted him. If you enjoyed this and wanna watch more of me creating art, please like, follow, and subscribe.